the person sharing this information claims to be a molecular biologist who has worked extensively on axobiospheric organisms, TBOs for short. Despite the potential societal disruption, the motivation to reveal this information suggests a deep concern for transparency. The efforts to stay anonymous raise questions about their disclosures, legitimacy, and potential consequences. EBO's origin. The biologist suggests EBO's might be artificially created entities, potentially for a specific but unclear purpose. These beings purportedly have a genetic makeup that combines elements from earthly and unknown sources indicating the possible involvement of extraterrestrial or advanced human technology. Genetic Characteristics of EBOs The post details some fascinating aspects of EBOs' genetics. Their DNA is simpler and more compact than ours, but has unique elements like tripalindromic regions TPR, suggesting sophisticated genetic engineering. Certain genes match exactly with known human or animal genes, hinting at possible genetic manipulation. Physical characteristics of EBOs. The EBOs are described to closely resemble gray aliens of modern folklore, with key differences in their skeletal structure, skin, eyes, brain, and other bodily features. This brings up questions of their origin evolution and adaptation mechanisms, biological and artificial systems. The EBOs appear to have designs similar to human beings, like the circulatory and nervous systems, but also have unique features like an excretosudoriferous system for waste disposal and temperature regulation. They also possess artificial molecular machines, potentially indicating advanced bioengineering or adaptation. Speculation on EBO culture. The post indicates that EBOs might have religious beliefs centered around the concept of a soul field. It suggests a distinct societal construct that doesn't fear death and places less importance on individual duality Buddhism. So they are bioengineered worker bees. Any elemental components that are unattributable to our biome? Yes, knowing that they're disposable, unable to live independently without technological support, and that they're ephemeral. The only suitable hypothesis is that they are here only to accomplish their task. You seem to say that these greys were genetically designed using animal genes from Earth, as well as unknown genes. Does that mean that greys were created specifically for interacting with humankind? Are greys the middlemen between humanity and an unknown group? The hypothesis is that they were created to perform their tasks and be able to survive with only local resources. They must therefore be able to metabolize local organic resources. Do you think that there's any relation to the cattle mutilations and their nourishment? I can't say with absolute certainty. It's easier to collect and purify a raw material than to synthesize it, at least with our technology. If you want to create a new organism, you need nucleic acids, amino acids, and lipids which are found in large quantities in all animals. You mentioned having to read literature on their culture. Can you expand on that? What is their culture? Does it shed light on why they are here? Where they came from? Their culture is seemingly center on the fulfillment of this religious motivation. Question three. I haven't read everything in detail, but can you expand on the document on their religion? Ebios believe that the soul is not an extension of the individual, but rather a fundamental characteristic of nature that expresses itself as a field, not unlike gravity in the presence of life. This field acquires complexity 
resulting in negative entropy, if that makes sense. This gain in complexity is directly correlated with the concentration of living organisms in a given location with time and with the right conditions. Life in turn becomes more complex until the appearance of sentient life. After reaching this threshold, the field begins to express itself through these sentient beings, forming what we call the soul. Through their life experiences, sentient beings will in turn influence the field in a sort of positive feedback loop. This in turn further accelerates the complexity of the field. Eventually, when the field reaches a critical mass, there will be a sort of apotheosis. It's not clear what this means in practical terms, but this quest for apotheosis seems to be the BIOS main motivation.